Can a podcast pilot reduce pod fade? It is said that about 90% of independent podcasters fail before they reach their 10th episode, in some cases their 7th episode. But what if instead of launching a full-blown podcast, you do what today's guests advise you to do and start a podcast pilot? Today I'm speaking with Vince Quinn, co-founder and creative director of SBX Productions. Thanks for coming and speaking to us on Tools of the Podcast Trade, um, Vince. Yeah, thanks for having me, Jen. I appreciate it. Yes, my pleasure. All right, before we get into what you do, could you tell us who is Vince Quinn? Uh, wow, uh, it's a it's a lot to say. I'll keep it short. Uh, on the base level, yes, I am a podcast producer. That's what I do. I help people build and manage shows. Uh, I'm also a video game obsessive, uh, an average cook, I would say, and a barbecue enthusiast. I'm um, a lot of things, but uh, yeah, I mean, I I got started in radio, so I did that as well. I did sports talk radio for ten years, and uh, that's how I got into podcasting and everything else. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you for that. Okay. So podcasting, what is it about podcasting that you like? Yeah. uh, A part of it, it's funny because how I got into podcasting, like podcasting got me a job in radio because in like 2012, I started a sports podcast because everybody in Philadelphia had a sports podcast in 2012. So I did. And I got work at a radio station And the fact that I was doing a podcast was proof that like I can host a show. I have an interest in this and I can carry a conversation and I'm trying to do it. So it was proof of concept for me to get on the air when they needed somebody in a pinch. And then from there, like working kind of backwards as it's all come full circle, it's funny because part of the reasons why I love podcasts is I started to hate radio. Like it's a four hour show. I don't five days a week. What, for what you know like sometimes there's so many times people were just killing time or like didn't truly respect the what they were presenting to the audience like they would half-ass things or whatever it was so like looking at podcasting where it's like okay i don't have to try to talk to everybody i'm actually very specifically talking to very specific people and so i can get more granular in conversations and i don't have to be like so it doesn't have to be surface level. You can be deep. You can be as long or as short as you want. You can have as much production or as little production. I've worked on shows that were two minutes and had a thousand sound bites, it felt like, in a two-minute show. And there's other stuff that's two hours and and there's not a single sound effect played. So like all that kind of flexibility and everything, I love that. I, I think it's what makes it great and why so many people are drawn to it Yeah, and why it's it's just such a great medium. Yeah, yeah. Podcasting is awesome because you have control. I mean, we're in control. We don't have to depend on corporate types or whatever. And that's what I love about it. Right. Freedom. Yeah. It's, fr- it's, it's true freedom in what you talk about and when you do it and what you want to get out of it. Yeah. That's what's great. Yes. Awesome. Thank you. So I'm going to go basic with you because our audience, they're mostly aspiring podcasters or new or, you know, professionals will want to listen. So what's Mm -hmm. the best way to start a podcast? Yeah, so everything is about pilots. Like, pilots are the world to me. And, And what I mean by that is the idea of testing something out before you commit. Right. And for the people who are like, oh, I'm thinking about doing a podcast. I don't know if I should do it. Like a lot of times what people tend to do is they just tell the world. They're like, hey, everybody, I've started a podcast and they make the logos and like they try to uh, uh, they just put episodes out and they have no idea if they actually like it. You don't understand what the workload is. Like, you don't know if the, if the idea is actually any good. Mm-hmm. You know, whether or not the public likes it, you might do your own show and listen back and go like, oh, actually, I don't like this. Like, this isn't what I thought it was in my head. Yeah. So what I'm a big believer in is that idea of a pilot, which is on your own. Like, don't tell the world about it. You know, just do the episode of a show of what you think it would sound like, what you would want it to be and see what that is. Uh, see what kind of research you do to to put that episode together. Are you doing a lot of research? Okay, you can. Are you going to be able to do that all the time? You know, like think about that. So I think going through the process with the idea that it's not a commitment where it needs to be this big public thing, 
but rather let me see if I like this and what the experience is and get to know it a little bit and and sharpen it up. Like that, I think is everything. It's it, like the most basic way I can say is like a band doesn't just go like, "Hey, I just thought of this song yesterday." All right, one, two, three. Like, you know what I mean? Like they they yeah. practice it, they write it, they yeah. write it. Like, and and people should do the same thing with podcasts. So I think that's really the fundamental thing is just like test it before you put it live. Yeah, and I I think that applies to you know experienced people as well. If you want to do something for bonus content, you want to do a new segment. You want to uh, move the show to twice a week. Uh, practice doing two shows in a week and see if you feel comfortable with that. Like whatever it might be, but just the idea of test, analyze, refine, and and figure out where to go from there. Hmm, that makes absolute sense and have me thinking. So we have this t- statistics that we throw around that says ninety percent of podcasters fail. They pod fade before by seven episodes or something like that. And you always think, well, maybe they didn't have enough um, audience or something like that. But maybe if they did what you're suggesting, do the pilot, see how much work is involved, maybe some of those people will either still be around or never wasted the time starting in the first place, right? A hundred percent, right? I think one of the things that happens a lot with podcasters is uh, on any level, whether it's if they're trying to do it for fun or they're trying to do it for business and they're, and they're going to just bootstrap this thing and do it on their own. I think the problem is they get to editing and they're like, oh, I hate this and it's a lot of work. You know, like yeah, it's not, yeah. it's, if, if you're not into editing, it's not fun. It's no. a massive chore yes. and to have to go, okay, well, I had the conversation. I love that. Now I've got to edit this thing and then I've got to upload it somewhere. And like, I don't know how hosting works. And now I have to promote it too. And like, how often do I do that? And, and people aren't comfortable promoting. Like there's so many different things yes. that go into making a good show. And so, yeah, the, the testing, that's that's 100% why I say it, right? It's like, and especially anybody who's doing a show like with a friend or a group of friends, right? Like, okay, who's doing the editing? Who's, you know, who's posting the show and running the social media? Like, you got to figure out those roles. And if nobody's willing to commit to do anything, and from the start, it's just like, oh, I don't know, like, we're all just happy to be here, then yeah, odds are it's going to fall apart quickly because nobody's truly committed to what it is or doesn't understand the kind of work that's actually involved. Yes, yes, yes. And if you're not a true entrepreneur, you know, with that entrepreneurial spirit, you will give up soon, right? Yeah, it's a, yeah. it's a drive. It's a major commitment, yeah. you know. And and people tend to, you know, and that's why they they all quit so quickly, right? They they prove to themselves of like, oh well, I'll just do it next week, or like, oh, I'll, I'll I'll do it Tuesday or whatever. Like they just they push it off because ultimately, deep down, they don't want to do it, yeah. or they don't want to do all of the work that's connected to it, and so they they just let it die, and it dies quickly. But yeah. that's the thing. Yeah, just. Test it out. See if you like it. See, try the idea. Because, like, I I think a lot of times, you know, people don't experience the energy of a show and what they're thinking and and how that actually presents, right? Because, like, when you're doing a show, the whole goal of all of this is you have a goal. You have something you want to actually accomplish Mm -hmm. from doing the show. So, like, what is that goal? And how does what you are talking about on the show, what you want this content to be, the brand, the message, all of it, like, how does that help your goal? Does it accomplish your goal or not? Does it need fine tuning or not? And so that's why it's like, yeah, do these pilots, take your time. There's no, like, you're on your own time. And it always feels like you're on everybody else's time because they're all posting and there's all these successful shows out there and all this stuff. Like, you're on your own time. You do it your speed. And and make sure you're accomplishing your goals in the process. And if you're not doing it, then please, for the love of God, give it up. Don't do the show. Like, yeah. it's not the right thing for you. But yeah, determine what the right thing is. And, and pilots are really the way to do that. Yeah, I like that. I love it, actually. <laughs> so before we, <laughs> before we move on, I want you to tell us what you do for your clients and how mm-hmm. we can get in touch with you. And then we get into some more stuff. Yeah. So one of the things they do is a pilot program. Like I give people the opportunity. And and with that, what we'll do is let's say, okay, we're going to have a conversation. I'll figure out what your goals are and work with you on that to define what that is and how it works as a show. We'll do one episode of it. Like my people will record it. 
edit it. We'll review it together. We'll have feedback on it. If if you think, oh, it's close and like we're talking about it, we're like it's almost there, but like let's do it one or two more times or let's try it this way instead of that way. We will do that with you. So you can get up to three recordings of a pilot. Mm-hmm. And then from there, we'll give you ideas of, okay, here's how you can execute this in a way that you can actually maintain. And here's what it would cost for us to do that. And if you want to do it on your own, then like no problem. You can do it on your own after that. But we are available to help you with all the other stuff that we do, which is engineers on every single recording. We can help you schedule your guests, work on the release order for the season. Uh, If you want basic transcripts, so like AI transcripts, or you want a professional transcript and have that edited, we do that. Um, So there's a lot of different things around the show that we can help with managing, you know, growing it, social media clips, like all the things of getting the word out there and just running an efficient show day to day. Yeah. That's what we do. Yeah. Okay. All right. And your website, like any contacts, information? So yeah, sbxproductions.co. Uh, it will be .com. So it's, it is changing. So uh, yeah, but sbx, so like sandbox, mm-hmm. sbxproductions.co. And you, there's a contact form there. Anybody who wants a free 30 minutes with me, that's all it takes. Okay. All right. Then we put that in the show notes so people can see that. Thanks, Vince. All right. So I've of, often talked and heard people say, well, everybody with a business should have a podcast. Or if you want to have a business, you should have a podcast. Is that true? Um, and what's your opinion on that? I think it's a nice idea. It's absolutely not true to me okay. um, because because he, here's the thing. I think one, especially for people who are like solopreneurs, which is a lot of people that I deal with, they don't have the time to actually do the show. Yes. Like if you're going to do this, you know, and, and even scaling it back, right? Like one of the ways that I'll work with certain people and say, okay, here's how we can make the show work is we'll do a season, which is we do 10 episodes, right? So let's just do 10. And then we'll release that like a TV show and then we'll take a break and then we can do another season and like we just keep it moving that way. So it's not every single week and it's not as much of a grind, right. but that still doesn't work for everybody, you know? So like that, that's one of those things where I'll say, okay, maybe you should be a guest and you should put your energy into guesting that way. You can do it as little or as much as you want. It's like driving an Uber, right? If mm-hmm. you want to get booked on 10 shows, all right, then send out a bunch of invites and once you hit 10 you're done. Or if you want to have shows every week, do it all the time. Like it, it's, as, it's as flexible as you want it to be. Yes. And a lot of times it's a good build up to running a show if you do in fact get the time down the line. But to start, that might not be the best bet. It might right. be the best bet to sponsor a local show instead because you know what? You're, you're not the voice or maybe there's a show that's, it, that's local and it's got your audience that you want to talk to and you can accelerate that then be a sponsor of that show. Build out a relationship with them. Try it for a couple of months mm-hmm. and see what it looks like to have somebody else who does have the audience. You're a part of the show. You're still embracing podcasting. Like that's, that's the beauty of it. And that's part of why I love all this too, right? Like I think, I think so often people are hooked in on the idea of, I like to talk and shows are fun and this, this can be this great thing. So I want to do that. Mm-hmm. And like, I totally understand. That's what I do. I built my life on it. But like, it, there's so many ways to approach it where you can get value out of it. Yeah. And that's okay. Cause it's, it's really just, how does this help you grow? Right? Like what are those goals? What do you want to get out of it? And if it's just an entertainment show and you're just doing it for fun and like, there's no pressure, then great. Like go do it. Have, have the greatest time of your life. But, um, you know, if you're trying to build your business on, it, there's just so many ways to go and don't feel like you have to host. it. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. I I appreciate that because I was one of those who actually started out thinking like, eh, they're, they're, you know, a divorce lawyer. Maybe they should have a podcast, something like that. But yeah, I'm learning that doesn't always work. Being a host of a podcast, it can work the other way. So yeah, thank you for that. Mm-hmm. All right. So let's start out with ba- another basic question. You want to start a podcast. You actually decide you're going to and you you embrace the work, right? Where do you start? I'm going to tell you, it took me six years to start my first podcast. This is my second one. Okay. And and I went through this rumination on lots of stuff. The microphone, the this, the that. The, and I had always set up when I first started. But we don't have to do all of that, do we? No. 
Not at all. I mean, and, and that's the whole point of it, right? Like, that's the beauty of it. I think the, the equipment a lot of times can be a distraction, right? Especially if you're just trying it out. Um, it, it do, th- And that's what the pilots are for, right? Like, it's figure out when you're going to approach a podcast. What do you want to do? Like, what is the goal? What do you want to get out of it? How are you communicating with the people? Let's say you're driving business, right? You want to get business. You want to get clients. Great. Who is your target audience? What kind of things are you going to say that solve their problems? How are you doing that on the show and doing that consistently? So you got to figure all those things out. Then you do a pilot, you see if you like it. Then maybe you do two or three episodes, you know, record ahead because before you release, then you give yourself time. You can breathe, like do multiple episodes and and it still gives you that off ramp. If you do three, four episodes and you're like, no, I like this pilot, I'm going to give it a try. But then you just can't commit the time to it because you're too busy. You got too much going on. Then you'll know. So it's just like, yeah, breathe on the release because everybody wants to be public. Take your time on that. Figure out those steps. Make sure you like it. Build a rhythm with it and a comfort level. And and the equipment, I mean, there's there's things for editing that can be pretty easy to make you sound good. There's people on Fiverr that can help you out to make you sound good, even if your quality isn't very good. Um, there's equipment that's really affordable that you can invest in. You don't need a $200 microphone. You can get a $50 microphone, in some case, a $25 microphone, Mm -hmm. like, you know, cheap webcams, used equipment. Like there's so many ways to go about it affordably. And so, yeah, like those, those investments, make sure you like what you're doing. But before you you really do it, right? Like I'm not gonna buy ice skates if I, you know, I'm not right. a good skater. Like it's not. I, I I'm gonna rent skates first. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's it's very much the same idea. Yeah, good and thank you. And that's where someone like yourself comes in that you do all the dirty work, so to speak. And if the person decide, well, I really do like this podcasting thing, then what what Vincent is and SBX showing me. I, I want to do this going forward. I have the funds. I can pay Vince or, you know, I don't have the funds and I do it myself. So I, I think I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Because we try to be lightweight and we try to be like a support system. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Because like for me, I'm a small business owner. Like I, I am one of the people that I work with. So yeah. I totally get that. And I'm just trying to do it in a way. And that's what I've spent really three years developing is like, how do I get this process where people are getting the right kind of attention that they want and they can manage a show in a way that doesn't crush them Uh and be able to grow that thing and grow their business while I'm growing mine and that in that same philosophy, right? Like that's that's what everything is about for me. So trying to help people as much as possible, find answers to those problems. And like I I've done other things where it's like just editing here and there, or really what it goes down to now is I just do a lot of coaching. Like people want to check in, hey, once a month, once every three months, whenever there's an issue. Uh, like whatever it might be. I do a lot of coaching in that way, feedback on how the show's going, okay. how they can be a better host, ways to approach interviewing, uh, what their production process looks like. Like a lot of things that I can just give a peek under the hood yeah. and, and just do that for a, a flat hourly rather than committing to all that production work, right. even for a season if you can't afford it, like no problem. And, and let's get you moving. Yeah, makes sense. I appreciate it. All right. What is Vince grateful for today? Wow. I'm grateful for my patience. (laughs) I'm grateful for my patience because it's been tested. And if I was a less patient person, I would have been ballistic like these last weeks. It's just the summer, the summer pace sometimes kills me because like I'm so hungry and I just want to be out there and I just want to be making stuff happen all the time. And it is, it's the, it's the heat of July. Like nobody's doing anything. Yeah. Um, so I, I would be yeah a complete raving psychopath if I didn't have patience. So I am always told I'm an incredibly patient person and it's been tested this week and it's held strong. So thank, very thankful I'm patient. <laughs> I'm thankful you're patient too, Vincent. Thanks for sharing that with me. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. All right. So before I let you go, I want you to give, you've given us a lot that, you know, a new podcast we could chew on. But before I let you go, can you give us two or three tips to an aspiring podcaster? Yeah. So one, be selfish. Talk about things that you are truly passionate about. Don't worry about speaking to the whole world and every single person on the planet. It's not your audience. That's not what this is. Like You have to share who you are and what you're about and be confident in speaking your opinions on things. So 
do that. Like, don't don't worry about what you think other people might want. Right. It's uh-huh. just if you like if you, especially if you're doing an entertainment show, like if you're just trying to build a community and be a part of a community, say your opinions on things, because if you sound like everybody else, nobody cares. Right. That's that's number one. Um, and the second thing is for anybody in any show on any level, be willing to talk by yourself, do segments by yourself, take those opportunities, pilot them if you haven't done it before, right? Like mm-hmm. practice doing those segments on your own, episodes on your own. Guests are going to cancel. Uh, you've got opportunities. You know, you have a regular audience. They want to hear from you. Giving them more of you should not be something you're afraid of doing. So find those things that you want to talk about that that enhance the experience that you're already providing people and go about doing that. So be confident in that or work on building your confidence in that because you'll be amazed at the things that you've developed in your mind that are buried deep down there and they just need a space to truly breathe and and you you can learn a lot. So uh, yeah, don't be afraid to speak about yourself. Thank you. That's pretty awesome. My great tips. Thank you, Vince Quinn. For coming and talking to us on Tools of the Podcast Trade. I really appreciate you. Thanks for having me. This was fun. Yeah, once.